ஸ்ரீ குருபியோ நமக எபிசோட் டுவெண்ட்டி எயிட் இஸ் எ கண்டினியூவேஷன் ஆஃப் த ப்ரீவியஸ் எபிசோட் ஆன் த சேம் சப்ஜெக்ட் ஃபேட் அண்ட் ஃப்ரீவில் ஆச்சாரியார் சைட்ஸ் தி ஸ்டோரி ஆஃப் சத்யவான் சாவித்ரி டு ட்ரைவ் ஹோம் த பவர் ஆஃப் ஒன்ஸ் ஃப்ரீவில் a king for a very long time did not have a progeny he offered he started to do gayatri japam continuously and offered oblations in favor of gayatri mata he was therefore blessed with a daughter he named her as savitri when savitri came of age he requested his minister to accompany her to go around so that she can find a suitable match for her both of them after a while returned back to the kingdom and when the king inquired savitri has she chosen her partner savitri replied yes i want to marry satyavan who was again a son of a great king now what happened to satyavan's father was suddenly he lost his eyesight and because he lost his eyesight a neighboring king took advantage of the situation invaded his kingdom and drove satyavan's parents out of the kingdom so satyavan and his parents started to live in the forest it is there Savitri met Satyavan and found that he would be his best match but Savitri's father was not happy how could he give his daughter in marriage to a king who does not have a kingdom now and to a prince who is not likely to become a king in the future so he was very concerned but Savitri was adamant so the king consulted narada narada came back and told savitri your choice may be perfect but it's my duty to indicate that satyavan will die in the next one year savitri was still adamant and said i have chosen him as my life partner and i would like to marry and live only with him whatever may be the consequences and the king finally yielded and got savitri married to satyavan and savitri went to forest along with satyavan she was a very capable wife and also a very pleasant daughter in law narada had already indicated the time of the death the likely death of satyavan so savitri went into a penance four days before in stood in a motionless form and did not take any food the parents or the parents in law were quite worried and concerned and when they inquired what is this that she is trying to do she said no i wanted to practice a penance and i therefore resorted to without explaining the truth the d day came and savitri fasted the whole evening and requested satyavan to take her also into the forest when they go into the forest and as they were cutting the fruits and the leaves satyavan fell on the lap of savitri and died and savitri because of her tapas shakti could see yama himself coming to take satyavan when she inquired yama how did you why did you come instead of your dutas yama said Satyavan is a very a man of righteousness and therefore I felt I should come and take him back Savitri follows Yama Yama resisted saying that you can't come to the loka when with your life in existence Savitri made the first statement it says she quotes from the shastras to say one who treads or walks along with one more person is considered to be a friend we have connected ourselves through friendship therefore yama getting pleased 
grants her the first boon ask for anything other than the life of your husband she says restore the eyesight of my parent uh, of my father and mother emma restores it emma moves along with satyavan and says this is savitri following him savitri continues to follow emma says why do you follow me for which savitri replied the second statement that it is said in the scriptures one should be in the company of the holy therefore i thought i can be in the company of the holy because my husband is very dear to me and you appear you are a dharma raja and therefore a holy person and therefore i should be in your presence yama getting pleased grants the second boon to savitri ask for anything other than the life of your husband she says she demands restore the kingdom to my father in law the journey continues then yama says you can't come any further for which savitri replies holy men or bestow with the mind to forgive even if foe is forgiven pardon and you have always acted very mercifully why not you extend that mercy to me yama getting pleased grants the third boon say ask for anything other than your husband she demands a son to be born to her father who was otherwise without a son the journey continues further and savitri starts to eulogize and starts talking in praise of yama abundantly yama getting finally convinced so well said take the fourth boon ask for anything other than the life of your husband shavit savitri shot back and said i must get good progeny they should be good kings they should work for the welfare of the subjects yama said i bless you then savitri said i am a chaste woman i can't beget children through somebody else you should therefore restore the life of my husband and she got back satyavan and came back got children and they were they were kings future kings and they ran the empire keeping their subjects extremely happy acharya therefore concludes one who is willing to sweat willing to work hard willing to be smart and intelligent then these are all parts or components of free will you don't have to consign and cry or go and weep and get isolated to say fate has conquered me god gives you fate based on your previous karmas but god is very compassionate he also hands over free will to you how do you use fate and free will together let's see in the next episode shri guru pyo namah